I just had a step out in this very long train to try and get the hot water we need to brew, right? Medley of infusions. Melvin's variety pack. This is Spice FM. I am Olivia Otieno with. And I'm Alice Odera. Melvin, my dear, dear CEO and founder of Melvin's Tea. Who is Melvin? Melvin's is a mover and a shaker and a tea maker. <laughs> that is who Melvin's is. I absolutely <laughs> love that. So from Flora Batahi, who is the founder and CEO of Melvin's Tea, to a woman who I must also ask the same question. Natalie mm. Nyandong, yes. Nia Atara. Okay, so Nia Atara was inspired by our matriarch of the family, Nia. And Atara means crowned in Hebrew. So but, um, when you put both of them together, it kind of encapsulates natural ingredients from Africa for Africans, which is what Nia Atara is about. So not a mover and a shake and a tea maker. About to get there. Yay! <laughs> 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 so Olivia, um, earlier on when we were talking, I told you I'm, I'm quite optimistic about uh, the African story, the Kenyan story. And um, Flora, this is for you. Scaling businesses essentially is about uh, capacity. It's about capability. I've watched you or rather I've known you for I, I think about 10 years would be good. The first time I ever saw you physically yeah. was at an event yeah. where you again were talking about your brand. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the 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 idea that you had the the vision that you had and it, it, it's so amazing to actually see what you have in front of us today but my question to you in terms of because i know for sure this i know for a fact you are in the export space yes we are that for me right there is scaling yeah. to on another level mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you would say to the entrepreneurs that are out there, let's say to young Natalie, that would be some of the things that it's a must. If you're not looking at these issues, if you're not addressing this, then you're just setting up, setting yourself up for a mess. For failure. Mm -hmm. Allow me to put it into three buckets. And uh, I would start with the first one where I say, know yourself and master yourself. Why did you start this business? What um, what is your motivation? What is your vision for the business? Or did you just fall into it? Because if we, there, there, there's, there's a principle where you say um, you can get employment. There are very many ways to earn income. So she, she, she got a, um, an idea. She, she didn't get her visa. She didn't do her degree. Then she came into this space. You have to ask yourself, is this a space I want to be in? Because you can get employment to earn your income. Now, the next level is self-employment. So you're self-employed. And in self-employment, you do everything. So, you know, you're the one, as you're saying, it's in her home. She does, she picks the call. She takes the orders and does and, and grows and slowly will grow herself. But you then need to make a conscious decision at that stage of, do I want more? And if you want more, um, then you go into owning a business. Now, owning a business is where you have processes, systems, strat strategies. It, you take it, it, you, it becomes professional. And at this stage, I always tell my young, young um, mentees and everything, get somebody to help you take it professional. It doesn't have to be a consultant. It could be Olivia. It could be yourself. Sit down, guys. I, I like what you do. You've grown your business to X. Can you come and become my board of advisors? You don't even have to start with board of directors and give them future judiciary duty. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying at this stage is know yourself. Who are you? Why are you doing this? And then, and only then, um, if, you're, if, if you're clear, then put down, what is your vision? She wants to see her natural products, um, you know, out in the market. How big is her vision? Where does she want it to go? And I keep saying, if your vision doesn't keep you awake at night, it's not big enough. No, mine kept me awake. Remember, Alice, I was up all night. I was like, you need to get up for the show. I, I wasn't able to fall asleep. Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask uh, Natalie, how did you go from I'm home with no visa to I have an artisanal soap brand? Where did the seed funding come from? Um, so I was lucky enough to actually be awarded a 3.6 million grant um, by the Kenyan government in partnership with World Bank. And the initiative was basically to create opportunities for the youth um, and um, in terms of employment. So for us to be able to um, expand our businesses and employ other Kenyans. You're going to have to unpack that. Yeah. yeah, because we go, we look for, you know, Bamba, whatever. The process of being awarded the grant from what do I do to how did you identify that opportunity and then put yourself in the running for that opportunity? Um, I'd have to say thank you to my father, first and foremost, because he actually is the one who helped me through the whole process. But you bas we basically had to submit a business plan, pitch it, um, 
get all the information you needed for the funding and then come back and hopefully get the award and here i am now that is beautiful i loved what alice asked you about the processes and the systems with regard to scaling your business but at the level where you are now flora what does scaling melvins mean to you all right, so that will now take me into my first bucket. Remember my first bucket, I said, know yourself, yes. understand yourself, master yourself. You know, re remember you're a leader. So leaders do certain things, grow yourself in those areas. The second one is know your business. So you need to understand financing. You need to understand marketing. You need to understand how to do a strategy, how to do, um, you know, a compelling strategy. How do you make your team understand that strategy? You then need to build a team. You know, they, they say... Um, build a dream team that that ca can carry your vision for you when you're not because remember now we are at the stage of running working and that's the one they call it working on your business not in your business when you're self-employed and you're trying to get it make it work and we all started there you're working in on your in your business you that's what you do day to day but when you get out you start working on your business and that's what is fundamental to scaling your business so what are my systems and processes that take me there let's say uh, when i started going into exports i started at the beginning incidentally you know i started this brand and i said hey i'm gonna take kenyan tea out of the country and i went to the uk and i went to the states and I realized, oh my God, I have no financial support. I don't even understand what, you know, they're saying drop shipment. I mean, there's so much to learn. And at, at that stage, I got a board of advisors. And the first thing they said is, first go deep before you start going wide. Okay. So then that, so I said, brilliant. So I said, okay, so, you know, now that we have national distribution, we're strong. We started going out, out again, maybe 10 years ago. Um, you've got to understand the processes there. You've got to understand the systems there. You've got to understand the customer there. How do they buy? You know, initially you're, you're doing a push. So this is Melvin's tea. These are the colors. This is how it works. But in for, for different countries, tea behaves differently. The water is different. It's hard water. Your, 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 your blend has to be different. The colors don't work. Who's Melvin's? We don't. So you then have to, if you want to go deeper, now you start have to, having to understand your whole um, environment. Do I have the marketing uh, funds to do this do i have the you know do i have the team to do this what what does an export manager look like what should they be doing what should they be bringing to the table so it's not to scare you yeah <laughs> but it's basically what you're doing now but building those facets to get other people you know to be able to do what you do i love the fact that you've stated that there's actually an ecosystem behind this yes now within that ecosystem i'm mm -hmm. going to ask you to do a balancing act mm -hmm. you're going to wear the kepsa mm -hmm. share hat and mm -hmm. you're also going to speak from the entrepreneurial side of this mm -hmm. my question especially where government is involved mm -hmm. they are part and parcel of that ecosystem mm -hmm. they're an enabler mm -hmm. now we have um uh, natalie mm -hmm. stating that has basically be what would qualify as a cottage mm -hmm. industry it's mm -hmm. being run out of her home mm. woman owned yeah. youth mm. there are certain things she automatically qualifies for and i think in 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 other spaces would be a plus a, a great advantage to mm. her business you know getting on its feet and moving forward coming back to you do you feel that the government has really stepped up in terms of being an enabler ensuring that the environment is actually suitable to 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 have entrepreneurs be able to like a baby mm -hmm. get up mm -hmm. crawl mm -hmm. you know be able to walk eventually mm -hmm. be on your own and 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 you know just rise to the skies mm -hmm. for for lack of a better word wow you've stole, you've stolen my next bucket out of out of my my, my 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 hands actually because i said first know yourself then know your business you've perfected that and know your environment and that's where the whole environment ignorance is not ignorance is no defense mm -hmm. so what are you what, what are your requirements who are the standard bodies what are they supposed to be doing who um what regulations actually regulate what i do what's the size of the soap market you know I, I always say what's the size of the pie and what is the slice of the pie that you want so that that becomes your target um so that the, these are all areas that um you need to do to know as an entrepreneur and like i say ignorance is not bliss how do you get to know all this again join associations join the kepsa join the km join um, I would imagine manufacturing should perhaps be joining the, the KAM. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of um, support right now for um, SMEs, capacity building, whether it is the learning, whether it is a standardization, it's all out there. 
um, you guys are really fortunate in this day and age. For us, yeah. we used to have to drive and say, please, can I sit with you? Um, help me do this. And right now, it's at your fingertips. And then they add chat GPT. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> it's, it's all out there. Yes. I'm avoiding your final question of, um, is the government doing enough? No government will ever do enough. No government will ever really um, give you an opportunity. Is it easier in other countries, maybe in the first world? Yes, it is. Um, I guess because they're more mature. But we're in Kenya, and let's face this is what we are doing. So what I would say is right now the government is very aware of the challenges that an SME goes through. What I went through and what you will go through um, is going to be day and night. I mean, I didn't start with a three-point something um, grant, and I don't even think I've gotten grants that size yet. You know, everything is just like, yeah, I'll help you do this, this, that, or the other. Um, they're also trying to, to improve on their standardization. They're also trying to, be, to give you guys a lot of access to information. They're also trying to do a lot of capacity um, building in terms of markets. What a business needs, and I keep saying this, is you need access to everything. You need access to knowledge. You need access to finance. You need access to information. You need access to markets. And they're going out and really trying to say, you know, can, can the East African community work? So all of a sudden, I understand you sell at the tribe, you might find a, uh, somebody in, in Uganda wants to have your product because of what the government has done with the with, with the com, with the common market. You're able to take it there. Your ingredients. You might get to a stage where you have to bring in your ingredients from abroad. Obviously, you'll first look at your East African community, and then perhaps you'll go to Comesa, and then after when it starts working. So yes, the government is aware of what needs to happen. Is it easy? No, it is not. It is not easy in any way. I mean, you have the standards body. I think there are how many? 23 or something. You know, um, you, before you know it, you've got um, KRA, you've got, you've got uh, NSSF, you've got NHIF, you've got... And all wanting to know whether, whether, whether you've registered with them and you're doing the right thing. My dear, I, I'm so glad that you formalized because one of the biggest problems we find with SMEs is a lack of formalization because they fear what's coming. And I always say, it's going to come. Whether you like it or Whether not, you formalization like it or not. Like is the, important. Or get out of the business. Get out. Yeah. You know, like the sun will come, mm. you know, formalization. I mean, uh, these issues are going to come. What I tell people is be bigger than them. Mm. You know, so when they come, you have done it. You have ticked the boxes and you can afford. Oh, I don't want to do it because I have to pay. Yes, you have to pay. But I mean, nothing is for free. There's no free lunch. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do we, uh, if you want to build your, your, your brand to a Unilever, they didn't do it by hiding behind corners. Mm. You know, let's get it right. Yes. And let's build our market where do we get all our revenue it's in the market let's spend our time understanding the consumer from flora's mouth to god's ears to a unilever we are seeing sitting with two phenomenal women founders flora matahi founder of melvin's tea i have natalie nyandong founder nia atara artisanal soaps and my co-host for today alice odera this is double o direct I